Welcome to the Cross Canada Spotlight. I'm Mike Arsenault. Every week we take a look at a handful of the most interesting and entertaining stories produced across the Global News Network. We start this week in Ontario, where a young boy whose life was saved by firefighters four years ago had the chance recently to meet up with the men who saved his life. There we go. Hiya. It's amazing. Um, you know, a lot of times after a call, you don't see the person again. Um, they move on and we move on and, and you, don't, uh, you don't get an opportunity to find out what happens. But, but this time, uh, Peterborough right? firefighter Mike Coons was able to find out what happened to the three-month-old boy he helped save four years ago. Our crew was dispatched for a, uh, a child who wasn't breathing. And when we reached there, um, little Hunter here, he, uh, he, was, he was blue, wasn't breathing. Uh, fortunately, within a, a, a few seconds, uh, we were able to get him breathing again. It means everything to us. It's very nice to be able to be here and be with the entire crew that was there that day. Hunter visited the station soon after that emergency for a tour. And now at age four, he has returned and not empty handed. These traumatic events, like it can change a child. So for us to be able to give back, even if it's just teddy bears, we know that on days like that, it's going to make a huge impact on how they look back on that experience. So we're very proud of him for doing that for other children. When first responders answered the call to help Hunter, they gifted his sisters teddy bears to help comfort them during a frightening time. It was a gesture that stuck with the family. After Hunter's emergency, he's realized that the teddy bears that day really, really helped his sisters. And realizing that, he's saved up his money, he's made a donation, he's brought them in here today. And I think everyone really realized the impact that that will have on other children and what they may experience during a future emergency. So we really, hats off to Hunter today. And Hunter's story stuck with the first responders he met that day. Great to see that he's doing very well. He's in kindergarten now. He's doing great at school. So we're very, very proud of him. The Peterborough Fire Department is hoping that those teddy bears donated by Hunter will help other families as much as it did the McEwen family. Trisha Mason, Global News. What a cool addendum to that story that Hunter has taken upon himself to get teddy bears for other kids who might need them to get through a difficult time. And I think we can all agree how important a cuddle with a teddy bear can be for kids. I still remember my teddy bear. His name was Freddy, and he had an important spot on my bed throughout my childhood. From fake bears to real goats who lost their mom shortly after birth and kind-hearted humans, well, they stepped up to the plate to lend a hand. Gary, can you kiss? Well, maybe, but this, definitely. They're nutty about treats. Gary and his sister, Lola. <laughs> Actually, her brother's full name is Sad Gary. He got his name because where she goes bah, 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 like, like, like a goat, he goes bah, wah, wah. <laughs> Things did get off to a rough start for these two. They started out life as little cold orphans. Getting a break though when Sharon Shuttleworth took them in just hours after their mum died last winter. She started sharing stories about Lola online with lots of followers thanking her for boosting their spirits when they really needed it. Work stress, pandemic stress. We're just trying to help our community because we're all in a really, really bad time. Now helping out in another way. Yeah. Lola and Sad Gary are part of the campaign to raise money to support high-risk young mums in their area, just north of Calgary. Due to COVID, family members that usually give help can't with restrictions, programs with swimming and parent groups and play dates and stuff, those have all kind of been postponed or cancelled. So this program is really important right now. Come on, Gary! They lost their mom and they needed help when they were young and that's kind of what this program is about. There are mugs. Raising money with merchandise. Buffs. Lola actually painted these with her little hoops when she was a month old. And with proceeds from sales of this. We actually have written a book called What Could Possibly Go Wrong? The Misadventures of Lola and Sad Gary, based on real events in their life. Two little goats making a big difference. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Gary! Maybe Gary's not really that sad after all. Kiss. Oh, good boy. <laughs> Gil Tucker, Global News. Well, that was cuteness overload, and I'm always looking for new books to read to my daughter. Maybe I'll have to pick up The Misadventures of Lola and Sad Gary for her for Christmas. We're definitely switching gears now for this next story. Where do you think Canada's deepest subway station is located? It's in what used to be Lower Canada. Need another hint? Take a look. 
it'll be light rail trains, not trucks, which will eventually roll past here. You're looking at the future platform for the Edouard Mobati station for the REM. Getting down here, though, isn't as simple as taking a few flights of stairs. The station will be uh, around 70 uh, meters down. The equivalent of 20 floors, deep enough to almost fit this 22-story office tower in Old Montreal. That makes it the deepest subway station in Canada and the second deepest on the continent after the Washington Park Station in Portland, Oregon. A construction elevator now takes 90 seconds to ferry workers. When the station is built, five high-speed elevators will travel much faster. It's going to take around uh, 20 seconds to go from the top to down. The lifts together will accommodate 5,000 users per hour, according to officials. The Mount Royal Tunnel leading to and from the station is about a century old and was used by commuter trains. The station, which is new, will connect the rim to the Metro Blue Line. Travel time from this station to the Miguel Stop downtown, three minutes. Construction here started in 2018. It was actually uh, one of the biggest challenge from the RAM team to build this connection because it's really deep. The amount of debris excavated to create this station alone. It's about 35,000 cubic meters of rock that, will, that have been extracted from the ground. Workers had to be careful to not damage nearby buildings and the city's infrastructure from vibrations caused by the digging. There are plans in place for emergencies too. Ventilation shafts are being built, which will help extract smoke in case of fire. The elevators will keep working and there will also be stairs to leave. There are waterproof membranes behind the walls to keep water out. The entire station is expected to be finished in two years' time, ready to welcome users deep below the city's surface. Phil Carpenter, Global News, Montreal. I can't get over how cavernous the construction area is. I've always been a person who takes the stairs whenever possible. If I have a choice between stairs and an elevator, I always take the stairs. But I may have to make an exception in this case. 20 stories is no joke, and it's hard to argue with a 20 second elevator trip. But it's definitely easier to take the stairs down than up, so maybe I would give it a shot. Now if you're commuting again, you're probably finding yourself around a lot of people, and have you returned to social greetings like handshakes and hugs? Not ready for it yet? Well, this might change your mind. It's been a while, but now it appears some are ready to wrap their arms around others, while some... I'm okay with hugging my friends, but if a random stranger were to walk up to me and ask for a hug, I would say no. <laughs> After all, it's what we used to do. When someone goes with their elbow, does it make no sense because we are human beings? Others are very selective of who they decide to get up close and personal with. Well, only if I know they're double vaxxed. And it's the vaccines that have others feeling more comfortable as well. But two shots alone won't earn you a hug with this man. Even being vaccinated, if they've been in public all day, every day, well, it's a whole different story, right? Same goes for handshakes. Jason Tetro, the germ guy as he's known, wasn't a fan even before COVID-19 came around. The thing is, is if you are absolutely and fully confident about your hands, then go ahead and put them out there to shake. But are you fully confident in the other person? Can you be absolutely sure that person didn't pick their nose just before they said, hey, how's it going? So what are you going to do if you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation? You could just do what I do. And believe me, this happens to me more often than I would like is someone's like, hey, germ guy. And they want to like hug me or, or and I just give them that namaste. So you put your hands together and you just bow towards them very gently. Rosanna Hempel, Global News. I've never been a huge fan of handshakes. I was happy to see them go by the wayside during the pandemic and I'm not pleased that they're returning. I much prefer fist bumps. It's less contact, it's faster, and it gets the point across. I always lead with my fist just to try to head off handshakes of the pass. Sometimes it works, other times it gets super awkward. Now, last up this week is about a new at-home fitness tech that recently launched in Canada. It's called Mirror, and I had a chance to try it out. Throughout the pandemic, many Canadians were forced to work out at home. The at-home fitness industry exploded. Just keeping the tension on those glutes. From fitness creators getting millions of subscribers to people falling in love with the Peloton. I even do Pilates classes twice a week on YouTube. Exa lift. However, since many restrictions have been lifted, a lot of people have also returned to commercial gyms wanting to once again work out in a social setting. But there's a new player in the at-home fitness market here in Canada. It's called Mirror. 
It's not actually a touch screen, despite what a lot of people think. It all works via the app. Any of the classes you want to do, any of your filters. We actually have instructors on the mirror. They're all Lululemon ambassadors, and they're there to engage with you in real time for live classes. And on demand, they also have really great resources as well. They're super engaging, and you also have the opportunity to communicate with your community members as well if you do choose to turn your community camera on. With that camera on during a live class, you can track your progress against others in the class, provided you're wearing a fitness watch or a heart rate monitor. And there are close to 50 fitness genres you can choose from. It could be anything from boxing to yoga, meditation, strength, chair classes, pre and postnatal. Different fitness levels can tailor their workouts to their abilities. You can be an absolute beginner, you can be intermediate, advanced, or absolute expert. So depending on what kind of challenge you want, you can choose between that range. Generally, I'm not a huge fan of classes. I generally like to work out by myself because what gets me motivated is not words of encouragement, it's negative reinforcement. <laughs> so I could tell my instructor, hey, this is what I need to reach peak performance. I need you to yell at me and be mean to me. That's gonna get me up the leaderboard. That's I don't potentially know. there. I don't know if you can actually tell them, hey, be mean to me, okay. but they can definitely give you that feedback. Obviously, I wasn't going to pass up an opportunity to try mirror myself and my ego wouldn't let me do a workout below expert level and Selena was more than happy to oblige me. We got our class with Armand so we got a nice 15 minute expert level. Okay. You think you're ready? I think I'm, are you doing this with me or are you just going to supervise? I'll supervise. Supervise. <laughs> Sounds good. So you guys are staying in that loaded position as I drop here, big step, shift. Breaking a sweat yet? <laughs> Getting there. Lift. This is that expert level I was talking about. So when you asked if I do this, I said, no, I'm good. I have to remember this is the expert level. This, this is make, the expert level. Makes me feel better about yeah. myself. <laughs> we have closed captioning here. So yeah. if I am uh, get a little bit annoyed with the instructor's energy and peppiness level, I can mute him or crank the music up as well and yeah. just focus on the exercise and kind of suffer in my own pain <laughs> cave. Yeah, exactly. So oh, you're there. There. We are. Halfway there. Halfway? <laughs> 18 seconds. You faked me out there. You can definitely get a good workout with Mirror. If you're someone who is unsure of where to begin their fitness journey or likes to have your workouts planned for you, Mirror or something similar would be a great option. But if you're a fan of the barbell and throwing around some big weights, a typical gym is probably still your best bet. I'm gonna stick with my gym workouts. I forgot how much I missed going to the gym during the pandemic, but it's one of the few opportunities during the week for a little bit of social time. So I'd rather do that than work out at home at this point. Well, that's it for the Cross Canada Spotlight this week. Be sure to watch Global News Weekend every Saturday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. on the Global TV app and Amazon Prime Video.